The second story, which really was the big story of the week, uh, the Supreme Court heard initial arguments about this Mississippi abortion case, which basically everyone is now saying could lead potentially to a reversal on Roe v. Wade. We've got some info from the Daily Wire. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court heard arguments concerning a case regarding a Mississippi abortion law that could have massive implications for pro-life laws around the country. The case, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, concerns a 2018 law in Mississippi that bans most abortions after 15 weeks of preg pregnancy. As the law stands now, Roe v. Wade and the decisions that came after it hold that states have to allow a woman to be able to get an abortion up to the point of viability or when the baby can survive on its own outside the womb. Most states hold this mark at around 20 to 24 weeks. Uh, Josh, I wanna start with you on this one. I saw you at the National Conservatism Conference. Uh, the Roe v. Wade decision generally was one of the big things being talked about and how much the courts will get involved in all of this and will it get to the Supreme Court and everything else. Uh, what do you make about the arguments that we heard in the last couple of days? Yeah, so from my vantage point, Dave, this is kind of like the legal constitutional issue of all constitutional issues. It has obviously deeply divided America for for literally the past half century. Roe versus Wade, you know, was January of 1973, so we're coming up on the 49th anniversary of it. It, it was famously um, largely affirmed 19 years later in the 1992 case of Planned Parenthood versus Casey, and the Dobbs case out of Mississippi. And the underlying statute is basically a 15 week gestational ban on abortion with limited exceptions for after 15 weeks. But that's basically the statute. It, it does directly put in its crosshairs both Roe and Casey. And this is the best opportunity that pro-lifers have had for a modicum of sanity on, on the abortion issue, really since the Casey case in 1992. And, you know, I listened to the entirety of oral argument, I mean, from kind of a pro-life and really as a constitutionalist perspective, because, you know, as your very well-informed audience obviously knows, Roe versus Wade was completely concocted. I mean, like they made up a bunch of crap, basically, the penumbras, the emanations, all, all of this was just totally philosophized from the bench in pretty egregious fashion here. And the, the, the very modest claim that kind of the anti-Roe side, or at least most on the anti-Roe side make, is that the Constitution doesn't speak to this matter and that it's properly an, an issue for the for the 50 state legislature. So some of us actually do go a little further than that. But the kind of neutral middle ground position, which is kind of the mainstream, I would say, constitutionalist perspective, is that the Constitution just allows this issue to go to the states. And I, I personally was actually I listened to the entirety of oral argument on Wednesday. I was quite happy with what I heard, to be honest with you. I mean, even Justice Kavanaugh, who I think is considered one of kind of the swing justices on this case, really kind of came out swinging. I mean, he seems to have intuited that this leave it to the state's position is the neutral middle ground position here. So I feel confident predicting that they're going to find a way to uphold the Mississippi statute. The million dollar question is, will it be some some sort of like muddled kind of incremental, you know, John Roberts special or will they actually go the full way and actually overturn all of it? I, but I, I will say I have a lot of friends who even some friends who clerked on the Supreme Court who were texting me afterwards. They were they were really happy with what they heard. It probably couldn't have gone a whole lot better, honestly. Yeah. And for the record, I, I discussed this with Liz a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I do consider myself begrudgingly pro-choice really to about 12 weeks I, without getting too far down that road. But I do kind of understand this position of this is not an, a constitutionally guaranteed right. So you should kick it back to the states. I don't love making that argument. Uh, and I, I get the I get it on both sides. But I, that makes sense to me. Janice, what's what's your take on this? Listen, uh, the divided issue, right? We're already uh, a United States that is divided, and this one is going to divide us more. Uh, when you look at somebody like Kathy Hochul, who is saying, come on down to New York City. Uh, we're open for this procedure, whoever mm -hmm. wants it. I mean, that's, that's difficult to hear. I, I have two children. I am Catholic. I am pro-life. Uh, what I don't want to see is this as a substitute uh, for birth control. I don't want teenagers to think, oh, well, you know, I can go out and do this. And, and I have so many things that I can go to, including this option, which I think is terrible. Um, and I have so many friends that are craving for babies in their life. They can't mm -hmm. have children for whatever reason, and they are dying to adopt. 
Uh, you know, I think if education goes towards other options of having a child and giving it to loving family members, I think that that's really important. And, and I wish that we would, we would get to, to something like that, where we have more education to, here's something that you can do. You can have a child and give it to a family that wants one so badly. Yeah, well said. I mean, solutions. It's like if there were more nonprofits, I know that many of them exist, but if there were more nonprofits that would help women who say did not want the child for whatever reason, get that child to, to be adopted or fostered or whatever, maybe that helps a little bit. Liz, is there any middle ground here? Like this is just the one because it brings up philosophical issues and scientific issues and religious issues, all the existential issues. They're all on the table here. We can't agree on basic things anymore that two plus two equals four. So it's like, is there anything we can get to on this? Well, listen, the American people, I mean, if you if you ignore the elected officials in Washington, D.C. on both sides of the aisle, the American people actually agree on this issue. Over 80 percent of the American people want abortion banned in the third trimester. Over 60 percent of the American people, this, by the way, is both conservative and liberal, pro-abortion and pro-life, want abortion banned in the second trimester. The overwhelming majority of people do agree on abortion. They do want restrictions. It's just the very far leftist politicians who ignore that. But I, I echo a little bit of what Josh said. I listened to the entire arguments. It was about two hours worth in front of the Supreme Court. And I was shocked, actually, by how weak the arguments from the pro-abortion side were. Their arguments were essentially twofold. They argued that because it was, quote unquote, settled law, it's precedent. It's been, you know, law for what, like almost 60 years, um, that it can't be Yeah, it's just and, not which true. Which is ridiculous. I mean, it's, yeah. that's completely contradictory. Yeah, to our entire legal history. I mean, look at something like Plessy versus Ferguson. That was overturned by Brown versus Board of Education. That was about racial segregation. So mm -hmm. that argument doesn't hold any water. And then their second argument was um, an argument just about woman a woman's choice a woman's body yet they didn't mention anything about the baby's body which is the, com the the competing legal interest as we all know here i thought the arguments from that side were actually very weak i was very encouraged after hearing this um after hearing these arguments and it was very interesting to hear what some of the justices said some of the swing justices, how Robert was Roberts was very interested in the idea of viability. Mm -hmm. Kavanaugh was very interested in the idea of the Supreme Court being neutral on um, on the question of abortion. These are very this is going to be very interesting um, to watch, very interesting to see. And I know I uh, many of your viewers, I'm sure, are joining me in praying for these nine justices after they've heard this argument. We won't find out until June what their decision will be. Yeah, and also, I mean, I did watch most of it, and I do have to say, I thought that the the pro life arguments were just better. Like it's exactly what you're saying. They they were more thoughtful, where the others were, because because there just simply is no constitutional right to an abortion. I mean, Bernie tweeted it out right. this morning, and it's like, no, that's not in the Constitution. We can talk about Roe v. Wade, but like it's just not there.